Welcome back, y'all. A happy Friday to you. This is the Blue Chip Breakdown, and I'm your host, Bull. So far this week, we've been breaking down the Tennessee-Florida matchup a ton, but we got some more coming out for you because he and I will be joining Sports Talk J today on his channel in a crossover video. We know that y'all love those crossover videos, so please make sure to check that out. Again, it will be on his channel. Coming up tomorrow also for our pregame show with Timmy G, he and I, I'm going to be breaking down the differences between Hinn and Hooker back in 2022, which is pretty much what our litmus test is now for this offense and what Nico's doing this season. Y'all will definitely want to tune in for that. Uh, but today, we're going to just be breaking down some of the visitors that Tennessee is expecting to host. It should be close to like 70 guys, and they're all blue chip caliber from the 2025 to the 2028 classes. This is going to be huge because we're kind of playing catch up with some of these players, but with others, you know, we just need to reel them on in and bring them home. And I think that Tennessee can do that. And really, well, yeah, this is going to be our first SEC home game. So Neyland should be rocking. You know, the atmosphere is different here at Tennessee. So it should be a whole lot of fun. Please, y'all, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. We say that all the time, but it helps us out tremendously. Also, thank you to everyone that is supporting this channel by being a member. And if you would like to support us, you can become a member by clicking on the join button just below this video. And you will get exclusive content of the film breakdowns of our team, of the teams that we're facing, things like that. And also thank you to everyone that is supporting by donating to the Cash App. You can donate as little as a dollar by scanning the Cash App QR code wherever it is on this screen. All the links will be down in the description below. Please also consider giving us a follow on social media. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, y'all, first let's take a look at the players that we are expecting to visit this weekend that are currently committed. So this will be from the 2025 and 2026 classes. Obviously, you know, several very high profile names. It's going to be about 17 of these guys. And I mean, I would expect that all these guys will end up making it up on campus. So there are a few players that I kind of want to highlight as y'all are just kind of looking over who all is expected to be coming up. Number one is going to be Christian Gass and also Shady Hayward. Both of those players have already visited UGA. So with Christian Gass, he, you know, took in his first college football game at UGA versus Tennessee Tech. So maybe it could have wowed him some, but. I mean, Tennessee's atmosphere is so much better than the one down there in Athens. I'm just telling y'all that from being able to visit both of these schools several times. Um, and actually, Shady Hayward said that after he visited UGA versus Auburn, he was like, yeah, you know, it was a cool visit. But I mean, it's nothing like Knoxville. So hopefully, you know, both of these players will come up and just be solid. I think that, that everyone that, you know, we have uh, that's currently committed to our team, I think that they're all pretty solid. But you just never know because. Things can change, especially whenever guys are still taking visits. So outside of those two that have visited Athens so far this season, we have Jaden Harmon, who kind of started off his entire process as a very strong Tennessee lean. Then he decides to go to Alabama, but then Tennessee flips him from Alabama. Now he's still visiting Alabama, and it's just going to be huge for Tennessee. I think not just to show him a good product on the field with Tennessee winning, which I don't think that that makes too much of a difference. I know some fans think that that's everything, but these players really don't care too much if the team wins or loses. Their mindset is the team's going to be good once I get there, and that's the mindset that you should have because you have to be very confident, and all these guys will be. So the winning and losing part of it, that doesn't really matter as long as we don't just get blown out. You know, if we just look really bad out there, then, yeah, that could make a difference. It's something that Timmy G and I had talked about on the uh, midweek chat. But anyway, it's going to be very important for our linebackers to, you know, play well, for him to know that he's still wanted, you know, he's still coveted, things like that. So hopefully we can hold on to all these guys. Also, man, Darian Smith, who is a three-star defensive lineman, we need him to, to play tackle. I think that he's really good. Um, and actually, he has a teammate that's going to be coming up that we'll get to here in just a minute. But he has already been visiting some schools, and I know that he has an OV set up with Auburn coming up. So it's going to be huge to let him know that he is still a very high priority uh, you know, in this 2025 class because we need interior defensive linemen in the worst way. So we are going to move on to our 2026 visitors. And there's just a couple that I want to kind of highlight here. As y'all can see, it's several of them. It's about 39. But right here at the top, Manny Ihenacho, And he is a five-star offensive tackle in the 2026 class. On three has him as the number three overall player. I think I want to say it's like the number two rated offensive tackle. But he's a guy that's very new to playing football. He's about six foot seven, 340 pounds. Now he's, you know, trying to visit several schools. He's just taking things in. If we can make a very strong impression on him early on, that would be huge because we kind of know that this season, the offensive line hasn't looked great. I think that that's for several reasons. Either way, we understand that the skill guys don't matter as much if you don't have the people up front 
that can, you know, make them look better, right? Because if you give really almost anybody some time to operate, uh, you know, to be able to throw the football, people can get open. Or if you can give them some big holes to run through, people can run through. It doesn't take as much for my skill players that we have some really good ones up front. So he would be huge if, you know, maybe we could land him. I don't think he's going to be, you know, calling things in early too soon. Probably going to be a very, very long process for him. But just to kind of start this thing off, it's going to be huge for Tennessee to make sure that we make a very, very strong impression on him. The next player is going to be Zion Ely, who is a five-star edge rusher. And this guy is a stud, you know, another long rangey guy. And we already know that with James Pierce and with this D-line getting as much, you know, media buzz as they are, all these defense alignment want to come and play for Coach Gardner. We're starting to see that he really is the best in the business because there's so much depth. Now, we do have to kind of get our numbers up a little bit more just, just as far as the sacks and things like that. But defensive line can affect games outside of just getting sacks. You know, we're getting a whole lot of pressure on quarterbacks. So he's a guy that, you know, Tennessee most definitely wants to make a very good first impression with. But outside of that, man, y'all can just see several very high caliber players. And, um, you know, I think that Tennessee can get off to a very good start with all these guys. And hopefully, man, I think, you know, this 2026 class can still finish strong. Obviously, you know, guys like Faison Brandon and Carson Sneed will also be up on this game. Just kind of helping Tennessee to bring in more and more of these guys. I think that Faison might have a little bit more pull because people want to play with really high caliber quarterbacks. So we'll see what he can do, man, to kind of persuade some of these guys, especially these big old offensive linemen uh, that Tennessee definitely needs moving forward. And last, we're going to be taking a look at our 2027 and our single 2028 visitor. He's going to be at the very, very bottom of this list. I'm going to say this about him real quick. Whenever you are a 2028 player and, uh, you know, a team is targeting you this much, if you're starting to get big time offers, those types of guys end up being like blue chip, blue chip, like five star caliber. So keep a very close eye out on uh, that young man right there. And you can see that he's another edge rusher. But if we go back up to the top, Cooper Witten, we all know that his pops played for our balls. He's one of the all-time greats, but he played tight end. I think that Cooper can play linebacker. He could probably also play tight end. He's more than likely not done growing. Um, I mean, obviously, Jason Witten was like six foot six, and Cooper is still young. I think at this point, he's about six foot one, six foot two. But I mean, he could hit one of those later growth spurts and maybe grow into a tight end. Now, everything that I've heard so far is that it's not a slam dunk. He's just going to come to Tennessee. We're going to have to do a really good job of making him feel wanted, making him feel welcome. And the same thing goes for all these players, man. It's just, it's a different day and age. And something that I didn't bring up earlier is that NIL will play a factor, not necessarily with these guys at this point, but with the 2025 guys, with the 2026 guys, especially if they've already chosen to commit to Tennessee, maybe some of them want to try to restructure some of their NIL contracts. So I'm sure that Tennessee, you know, on the, some of the like, you know, backstage stuff, We'll do a really good job of making everybody want it. And hopefully we can retain the players that we have and just add on, you know, things can change every single week. But this weekend right here, really this whole month stretch is going to be huge for our volunteers. But those are my thoughts. Please let me know yours down in the comment section. Thank you for sticking all the way to the end. Much shorter video today. Hope that y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's Friday night. And we hope also to see y'all tomorrow morning for the live pregame show. But please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share it with your friends, family and other volunteer fans. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Thanks. Peace.